Government prosecutors have leaked grand jury material and other sensitive information to the media. Only three groups of people could have known the indictment had been returned at the time that it was leaked to the Times to protect the mayor's rights as council has diligently flagged these concerns for the government. But the government flat out ignored both letters. This has been done to tarnish Adams' reputation. Adams requests the court hold an evidentiary hearing and dig into their leaks. Mayor Adams strikes back. He's now asking for sanctions against the prosecutors in New York, saying that Adams has been the recipient of prosecutorial misconduct, that they have been abusing him, leaking stuff to the media, and he's demanding recourse. He also wants an evidentiary hearing to happen, and let's go through this filing as his attorneys appeared in court court yesterday. This is what this filing looks like. You can see it's a big one, 29 pages, a lot of table of authorities, table of contents that we'll fast forward through. But here's what they're saying in defense of Mayor Adams. They say, listen, for nearly a year, government prosecutors have leaked grand jury material and other sensitive information to the media to aggrandize itself, to further its investigation and to unfairly prejudice Adams, the mayor. Again, this is the Southern District of New York and the DOJ is terrible. So these leaks have disclosed the targets of the government's investigation, the nature of the evidence being sought, the identities of the witnesses, the government's operative theory, their specific strategies, and the characterization of key witnesses. The effect of these leaks is that by the time the charges against the mayor were unsealed, most of the details of this indictment and all of the evidence underpinning the government's case, they say weak as it is in parentheses, well done, had already been widely reported. In fact, the day before the indictment was even unsealed, even before the mayor's attorneys were notified of the indictment, the New York Times reported, before the attorneys even knew, that the mayor had been indicted in a federal corruption investigation. Only three groups of people could have known the indictment had been returned at the time that it was leaked to the Times. Three groups, the prosecution team, the grand jurors, and the court staff. But of those, only the prosecution team would have been privy to the government's plan to announce a, the additional details the next day as it did in its self-laudatory, self-enjoying press conference. It's therefore clear that the prosecutors are responsible for this leak. And those are DOJ prosecutors. And so you can see the government has shown an appalling disregard for the mayor's rights. Council has repeatedly asked the government to plug the leaks of their investigation, but they've ignored those requests, not even bothering to respond to the written submissions that document the pattern of leaks. And so this court should remedy their brazen violations. Leaking is a problem. Given the government's refusal to police its own misconduct, they don't care, the court must intervene to protect the mayor's rights. Damian Williams, who unsealed all this, as described below, the mayor has met his prima facie burden of establishing rule violations, and thus the court should hold an evidentiary hearing to identify the scope of Damian Williams' misconduct, including dismissing this indictment, saying since at least November 23, the Times and other prominent news outlets have published a series of articles detailing everything that's happening here, citing unidentified sources familiar with aspects of the probe, familiar with the investigation, with knowledge of the matter, they say. Sometimes they're expressly citing anonymous law enforcement sources. The nature of the leaks leave no doubt as to their provenance, okay? A non-exhaustive chronology proves the point. New York Times reported it got a copy of the search warrant for Brianna Suggs, who works for Adams. The article also set out a detailed description of what was seized. Three iPhones, two laptops, manila folders, stuff labeled for Eric Adams. It disclosed that agents served a subpoena. In other words, they knew everything about everything that happened in the raid. Two days later, on November 4th, CNN confirmed the same. Law enforcement officials who are familiar with the search warrants were their sources. They're leaking. Now, the article explicitly reported, and by the way, this happened with Trump all the time. The article explicitly reported that multiple law enforcement officials told CNN they're leaking because the prosecutors are crap. The following week, the Times reported in detail how the government got a search warrant for Adams' devices. The Times reported a person with knowledge of the matter, another person familiar with the situation. Two days later, they, again, three people with knowledge of the matter. The knowledgeable sources disclosed that agents had asked detailed questions. They knew everything about it. CNN did the same thing on the 14th. The Times did the same thing on the 16th. On April 5th, the Times reported federal prosecutors in Manhattan had been conducting an inquiry. These details were attributed to, quote, two people familiar with the investigation, all speaking on condition of anonymity. May 20th, another 
Mueller report about FBI. August 15th, Times came out with a new round of grand jury subpoena stories. September 23rd, the Times, right? They're in it together. The, the government and the media are in this stuff together. And on September 25th, before the indictment was unsealed, and even before the mayor's attorneys were even notified, the Times reported that Adams had been indicted. There can be little doubt that the source of this leaked information, this entire pattern of it, came from the prosecutors, since neither a grand juror nor the court staff would have been privy to the government's plans. And the prejudice from these leaks are severe. A cascade of these articles offer one-sided, misleading leaks, just tainting everybody, propagandizing everybody, even though we have a presumption of innocence in this country, even though I have no you know, particular love for Mayor Adams in any way. The predictable effect of this is to create a specter of broader misconduct. In contrast to this indictment and their narrow allegations, by design, the government's leaks have steadily created a facade of guilt, resulting in intense negative scrutiny for Adams. Yeah. Now do that times four across the entire country against a presidential candidate in the middle of an election. Think about that. And by leaking information to the press, the government has infringed the mayor's right to a taint-free grand jury process. Yeah. Now to protect the mayor's rights, and by the way, there's a difference between government leaking stuff and a defendant's free speech. To protect the mayor's rights, his council has diligently flagged these concerns for the government. We talked to them about it, but the government flat out ignored both letters. In a phone call to the prosecutors, the defense team for Adams re-raised the issue of these leaks, and they're still not responding. Again, they said, no, nah, we're not leaking anything. The government has never disavowed its responsibility for these repeated leaks, nor does the government appear to have taken any action to turn the spigot of confidential information and the leaks off. So there's good reason to believe that they're going to continue to leak until so the law says there should should be repercussions. The court must invoke its inherent supervisory authority to curtail this stuff. We've established a prima facie, facially evident case. We've checked the boxes to move this forward. We know leaks have involved grand jury information because the leaked information mirrors the indictment. For nearly a year, the Times have also been publishing this stuff. Grand jury information is very protected, so it should not be being leaked, and it is. These leaks about Miss Suggs, Mr. Negro is the name, N-I-G-R-O, Mr. Negro, and Miss Abba Sova's status plainly breach the secrecy of the grand jury proceedings. In addition to the identities and other things, it's all been disclosed. That should be protected under the local rules. But no, the Times was reported the details. The reality, that's his name. The, the reality is that the eventual contours of the grand jury's indictment, as well as the sources were all available to the public and the prospective jury pool. And we know the leaks came from the government. There is no alternative source from the leaks. The, the number of the leaks, the details all point to the government. And so on these facts, Mayor Adams satisfies his burden. These leaks have hurt Adams. It's clear that the government intended to prejudice him. The most obvious motivation for this is to strengthen in its case and the public perception of its case by coalescing support amongst various witnesses. They targeted people by saying, oh, we searched this person's home and we searched this person's home. And in this case, the government's ploy appears to have worked. Now, Miss Abba Sova has now, quote, turned against Mayor Adams because even though she did not make this cooperation, the decision to cooperate immediately after the search, the pressure that's come out from the media is now causing her to flip. Given her centrality to the allegations, there's no doubt that her cooperation apparently procured through leaks, right? So they're leaking so that it puts pressure on her. This is going to come out. Oh, it's already out. The leaks are likely to put pressure on senior justice officials to approve the indictment of the mayor, right? So as the leaks come out, oh, this is bad. Publicly, they're creating public support to indict him before they indict him. Moreover, since the leaks begun, the mayor has faced intense scrutiny. Ocasio-Cortez says he should resign. There are numerous other ways in which unlawful leaks have prejudiced Adams. All this stuff is now coming to light and he's entitled to an evidentiary hearing. So as a result, the court must have an evidentiary hearing. There's other law that shows that we should do this. Numerous courts have said that the improper use of media by this very prosecutorial office, and they, they've already denounced this from the SDNY, stop being so terrible, but they don't care. The misconduct persists. And so a public hearing should be held to investigate the SDNY, which we'd love to see, and the remedies imposed should be commensurate with the severity of the leaks. And this case should be dismissed where there was prejudice established. And so while the evidentiary hearing will help the court to determine the extent of these violations, this has been done to tarnish Adams' reputation. And so for the foregoing reasons, Adams requests the court hold an evidentiary hearing and dig into their leaks. Signed by Alex Spiro and William Burke, two very good, very capable defense attorneys in a nice filing.
filing. So we'll see what happens. The government's not going to be happy about that. They're probably going to hit him with more charges. And you can see how they're setting this case up, right? Investigation leak, investigation leak, investigation leak, investigation leak. We have to take Adams out. They building public support for it as they're building their case simultaneously with one another. Though Adams might be facing even more charges. Here was a news report from Fox. They were there yesterday in court. That top story now, Adams arrived to the courthouse earlier this morning for that hearing. Let's get right over to Fox 5's Morgan Mackay, who is live in lower Manhattan with a breakdown from today's hearing. Morgan, what do we know so far? Bianca, really the headline out of today is that federal prosecutors said that Mayor Eric Adams is likely to face additional charges oh, and more no. people are likely to be indicted. Now, there's no set time frame on when that might happen, but Adam's attorney really pushing for a speedy trial, mentioning the primary election for mayor multiple times, saying that begins next year around March. That's when ballots get certified, and he wants things wrapped up well before then. Now, they couldn't agree to a trial date. Prosecutors say that this trial would likely take about four weeks, while the defense says that this trial could likely take between one to two weeks, leaning more to the two two weeks, but a big time difference there. Now, prosecutors want the trial to be likely May, but the defense wants that trial date set between February and March. So just to get into a little bit about what happened inside the courtroom. So this was just an initial conference. So they went over pre-trial motions, discovery, and of course, the trial date, which I mentioned. So Mayor Eric Adams, he walked into the courtroom. I happened to be sitting right next to the door, so he made eye contact with me as soon as he walked in and so you know I, I kind of said hello a little bit and he he smiled back at me gave me a thumbs up otherwise he after he sat down he did not look back at the press once now the judge went through all of the uh, the pretrial motions so Adams attorney filed at least two motions before this court hearing today and those two motions were one to dismiss the case and two to fine the prosecutors and get them sanctioned for for these alleged uh, leaking to the media. Now, prosecutors today outlined, they didn't go into exactly what those motions entailed, but prosecutors laid out a lengthy list of evidence. Now, that includes witness testimony. They didn't define exactly. All right, so we'll get a bunch of additional disclosure, right? If he gets charged with new crimes, we'll get new witnesses, new names, new lists. And so we'll see what Adams does in response to those new charges.